and I'm super fired up to be here with TC, introduced as the man who fires up the conference. So uh, thanks everyone for having me. Um, as TC mentioned, we founded AppDirect in the summer of 2009. Um, and if you can recall, it was the height of the Great Recession. And businesses around the world were struggling um, to be productive, to, to stay in business, to compete. And in fact, uh, you know, I came from a family that had a retail business, a furniture store uh, in Niagara Falls, Canada, right on Main Street. And after over 100 years in business, um, my family had to shut the business down right around the time I was graduating. And that was reflective of the state of the economy at the time, where businesses big and, str and small were really struggling to compete. And we saw the opportunity in the early days, um, you know, in 2009, of how the cloud could be um, the great equalizer to enable businesses to thrive again, um, and to enable and put technology in the hands of businesses at a better, uh, with a better business model uh, for them to really be able to take pace. And I think what we've seen over the last uh, almost decade now is really a shift in the way the economy works, um, which we really call the, the evolution of the digital economy, um, but particularly benefiting uh, businesses big and small. Very good. Now, before we dive in, because I want to touch on some of those, you guys recently had a, a unique milestone at your company. It's in your beautiful San Francisco headquarters. It looks right over the water, the Transamerica building, but you hosted the most popular president in North America to your uh, corporate headquarters. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so we, uh, we recently hosted uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau um, at our office in San Francisco. Uh, TC, pick, pick that tidbit up. But uh, I think one you know, interesting thing that we're seeing is on a global landscape, um, people are recognizing the importance of the digital economy and as well the importance of the channel um, in being the local trusted provider to connect people with businesses. Um, so I think that's uh, been recognized not only in the business world by people in the channel, people in this room, by people in the software business, um, but it's happening across the world. We're seeing um, CEOs of manufacturing firms, car companies, uh, people in uh, you know, Fortune 100 companies that would have never typically thought of themselves as a software company, you know, come learn. Um, and then we're also seeing people, um, you know, including um, a you know, prime minister or president of a country um, be really focused in learning about uh, what, what, we, what we are doing um, by really helping uh, businesses thrive. Well, you touch about uh, car companies and other companies that are building channels. Touch a little bit about how those channels are evolving. And we've, we, in this industry, talk about the existential threats to the two-step and three-step distribution. But you're seeing channels and partnerships flourish in other industries as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think one of the things that we see is that um, when we think about the digital economy, which we define as people bringing their uh, you know, relationships and, and their business online in a digital way and transacting online, it changes the landscape of what we would consider um, software or what we would consider a digital product. Um, and I can get into this a little bit, bit later, um, but historically, we would have thought as, of, of software digital as maybe a website, maybe software, but even that was sold you know, in a CD or in a box or implemented offline. Um, now, not only have we seen a shift to software online, we're seeing a shift where almost any product is becoming digital. And the tenets of that digital service are the fact that um, you can essentially subscribe to it, um, you can access it from any device, um, and many devices themselves, let's take a car for example, um, you may have thought of a car uh, as a manufactured uh, automobile that has no connectivity or digital services, but really now it's almost like an iPad with metal wrapped around it, and the benefit that you're getting um, is really uh, you know, the, the smart services um, from, from the technology. Um, so when you used to think of your car, uh, car's engine as the actual physical engine, you know, I think in the future, uh, kids will think of the car's engine as actually the technology that's powering um, the automation. You and I have talked about the example of the Tesla automobile. There was a, a, a problem that the car would roll back on the city streets of San Francisco that you know so very well. And so the company wrote a software patch. It engaged the parking brake temporarily till it had enough torque till it would get over the hills so it would ease the owner's unease about rolling backwards. Well, that was updated on the fly, and suddenly you know, an automobile, like you said, gets better digitally. You know, that hasn't happened in 100 years of automoting. You wake up one day, you get in your car, and it's better than it was the day 
it before. All right, let's get to your company, ActDirect. Four different really uh, platforms. Run us through each for those that don't know the organization. Yeah, definitely. So from AppDirect's perspective, we want to help people monetize in the digital economy. And essentially what that means is we have a platform that helps you sell or resell digital services. Um, and this is really relevant when it comes to the channel because we see the channel as one of the best ways of delivering multiple services um, in a consolidated way. Um, so really our monetization platform consists of different products or technologies, um, one being billing. So one of the things that we recognize is that as things shift, products shift online, it's about subscription-based models, metered-based models. So billing isn't only you know, one price, one time. It becomes very complex on how to do that. So we have a billing technology that helps you meter rate and invoice. Um, we also have what we call reseller uh, technology, um, which helps all of you be able to better enable um, your channel businesses or as a, a, as a channel be able to um, do things like uh, quote faster, mark up, mark down, bundle with other services, do all that in the fly, um, and then auto provision the services as well. Um, and we also have um, other capabilities around a marketplace that, that can be deployed um, online or on a phone to enable anyone to have the services that they need and buy them digitally, um, not only um, you know, uh, in person. Um, and then finally, um, we have an app devices component, which is really the IoT opportunity for each and every one of you, which is saying, how do you benefit, if you're in the channel, from providing value-added services or software attached to any device? And that device doesn't just need to be a computer or a server. That device could be um, a security camera. That device could be a car. It could be a fridge. It could be a sensor. Um, so I really think that the opportunity of, uh, of IoT can really open up the landscape of the channel as well. All right, let's get right to it then. How do you guys work with traditional master uh, resellers and uh, master distributors and traditional distributors? Friend, foe, competitive, collaborative? What's the, uh, give us the rundown there. Definitely, so we, we believe you know, that this is a open ecosystem and AppDirect can be the platform that can help anyone monetize. Um, so some of our uh, you know, larger customers are distributors, um, VARs, resellers, agents, um, and we have a variety of different, um, essentially, additions depending on how big you are. So if you're you know, a larger enterprise that has, operates in multiple markets with multiple business units um, and then different resellers from there, we can give you the technology to run your own stack, attract your own thousands of resellers. Um, but if you're a smaller VAR or MSP and you want the ability to bill or offer services online um, or really automate the back office, um, we have uh, entry-level services that can help you as well. Let's shift to the SaaS marketplace. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if you were to ask me two, three years ago, I would have thought we would have seen greater traction among VARs, MSPs, IT consultants selling SaaS software. It's happening. It's starting to build, but it's been a little more slow. How would you rate the progress? What do you think needs to be done more? And what kind of vendors are leading the way? So I think uh, if I were to say one mistake that we made in, in, in kind of our thesis or messaging is that um, SaaS is everything. So a lot of times we may say that SaaS isn't taking place uh, you know, as fast as, as we would have imagined. But if I look at almost everyone's business here, um, your business has been digitally transformed in some way or another, and it's driving significant opportunity or significant threat and challenge to your business. And we've seen huge success stories of people being tremendously successful at building businesses from, the scra from scratch at selling only um, software as a service. But when we think about what software as a service did, is it really shifted the way that we think about software. So traditionally, if we would have thought about software, it would have been saying, okay, I'm gonna get, um, you know, a, a, let's say an accounting tool on a CD, I'm gonna install it, um, and that, that's all it is. Um, but really what we've seen is that software as a service and that delivery model is now the way people sell any type of digital service. So when we think about, you know, telecom services, uh, VoIP, fixed line, uh, broadband, all these different services are, are essentially becoming um, sold digitally in a recurring way through online channels, very SaaS-like. Um, so really going back to um, you know, where I think things are at is that SaaS was actually a new business model and many players today are predominantly using that business model. Um, and, and whether you're selling um, you know, productivity apps, communication apps, accounting apps, um, or what, whether you're selling I, other types of digital services, 
really that business model has transformed the way that all of us operate. Okay. Um, you were recently quoted as saying that channel firms are falling short of their goals due to a disconnected approach to sales. One reason service providers are giving customers mixed messages. What did you mean by that? Sure. So, so I, I definitely think that um, there's opportunity for everyone to win in the digital economy. Um, but I think that we need to take a unified front on the value that we're providing to the customer. So in the, in the past, um, what I had seen is that the primary way people sold things was saying, I have this product, um, buy it. And it was very specific. It may have been um, you know, very product driven. Whereas what I'm seeing in the future, the people who are most successful are selling solutions based on their knowledge of a specific vertical or industry. Um, so really solution led versus product led. Um, and I think these mixed messages come um, when people are leading with products without talking about the value um, and that, uh, that that solution brings. So one thing that I, I see often is that a way to really um, think about taking advantage of the digital economy and these SaaS-based or software-based business models um, is to really shift the way you think about selling to being um, really, really solution first. Uh, you're right in the heart of Silicon Valley. It's, you're sitting atop a, a very beautiful office tower right there on California Street, right? That's right. All right. So you see it all. You see it coming and going, and you hear the words digital transformation bandied about. You mentioned it earlier. What the hell is digital transformation in your esteem, and how can this channel take the best advantage of it? Definitely. So, um, so what we've seen is a, a, a long evolution in the history of computing cycles. Um, and if you go back you know, as early as the mainframe, people thought that what a computer was is um, you know, heavy computing power uh, of, of, of services or, or data that sits in one place. And what we've seen, and it took many, many years, right? Um, we've seen now data is everywhere. And because data is everywhere, no longer do you have to put information into something to get value out of that tool. Now that tool can be proactive in telling you what you need to do. Um, and what we really think of as digital transformation is the way of rethinking uh, the way your business now operates because technology is no longer something that you need to put something into. It's something that actually feeds uh, information back to you. And a good example of that is that you know, the history of music we used to always say, okay, I need to go and buy or choose that I want to listen to rock or to this artist or to the Beatles, um, and there needed to be shelf space for those different artists. But then all of a sudden when Spotify came along, um, it was no longer about um, just being a place to choose your music, it became all about discovery. And now people are used to just listening to and finding new music all the time. Um, so I went from someone who used to say I was a big U2 fan and only you know, buy the new U2 albums, and now I listen to all sorts of genres, all sorts of music, and, and that music shuffles all the time, um, and that wouldn't have happened if it weren't for really the, the idea of the digital economy or, or, or digital telling me what I need, not just me saying, oh, I think I like this because it's something that other people like. All right, you talk about the digital economy, but there's still a lot of friction in it. Talk about the places where you think innovation and technology can remove some of that friction to really accelerate the growth that's already growing pretty quickly. Yeah, definitely. So I think one way from an academic perspective of looking at our market is that we all live in this world of multi-sided platforms. So the idea is that we're sitting as the channel in between um, buyers and sellers um, and producers. And how do you make that you know, economy the most efficient as possible, right? And I think that each and every one of you in the channel opportunity has the opportunity to remove a lot of the unwanted friction from the customer experience and add a lot of value in doing so. So what we've seen when we time and time again go into businesses is that they say, we want to know um, what we need, we want someone to tell us what that is, and we want someone to make it easy for us. Because if I'm in the furniture store industry, I want to sell furniture. That's what I want to be good at. If I'm manufacturing uh, you know, uh, the coffee pot back there, I want to be super good at making it the best damn coffee pot I can. But I want someone to be a solution provider to tell me, okay, here's what you need to do full stop in order to get most value. 
And that's really, I think, where the friction can be removed, where right now, many of us in the channel are spending a lot of our time thinking about, okay, how do we figure out the, the invoicing and the transaction costs? And for each of you to do quoting, it's really tough, and you have to use different tools. And then for, um, you know, for each of you to bring new products to market, there's ramp up that you need to do, and then they don't work together. Um, so it's really difficult, not only for the end user to get seamless value, but it's also difficult for you. Um, and we think in the digital economy, a lot of that friction can be removed in the same way as we think about that music example where you just have to drive to the CD store, the record store, check, like, pick what you wanted, um, you know, check out. It took a long time to get it. Now it just comes to you within seconds. That can similarly happen to software. And, and when it does happen, um, and maybe I'll take TC's question from you, you could say, is the channel relevant? And I would say it's more relevant than ever because businesses still need someone to tell them not only um, what they need to do, but how they do it, how to implement it. And technology can actually help you be better at offering that end-to-end -end value without the friction. We've only got a few minutes left. I know that because I have to sit up. We're not the tallest guys up here, and they've put the time monitor just over on the horizon. So we've got about three minutes left. You've got a lot of men and women in front of you that are entrepreneurs themselves. They have their own businesses. Some are family businesses, which you're very familiar with. Talk about the culture that you guys developed to make the most of the opportunity. Maybe share some personal stuff about some, maybe some mistakes you made in course correction. But talk about the deep importance that culture is to AppDirect. Yeah, definitely. So when we uh, founded the company, we were two people in an apartment um, just about 10 years ago. And uh, we, look, we looked at some of the companies that we admired the best you know, over time. And what we kind of saw were a similar trend in their, in their culture. And essentially it was that from the early days, there was defined values, vision, and, and some form of innovation framework. And that really led the culture forward. Um, so you look at uh, you know a company like the Four Seasons, which uh, I always admired uh, you know from a hotel brand perspective, thinking that that pioneered luxury, and and the founder of the Four Seasons, uh, Izzy Sharp, and his wife Rosalie, um, they deeply rooted in values around the team, uh, around their ability of always um, exceeding expectations. Um, so you would have thought that the Four Seasons started with the vision of saying, and we want to be the biggest luxury brand you know, in the travel industry, but it couldn't be farther from the truth. They just started by a footprint of saying, we have a vision for creating a great experience and over, um, uh, you know, over uh, exceeding the customer expectations. We're going to do that by creating a really strong values-based culture. So we're going to define those values. And that's, I think, what's so powerful. And I think each and every one of you, in whatever business you're in, you have the opportunity to do that. And I also think with the digital transformation occurring today, each and every one of you can be a digital hero within your own company by thinking about how you can transform either your company or your customers. And being a digital hero doesn't just start by understanding the products and technologies you can bring to market. It also starts with thinking differently about the way business operates. So you defining values for the way you're going to operate in the digital economy or your team members, or your stakeholders, um, or you helping your customers through that footprint is a huge opportunity for each and every one of you. All right, we've got one minute left. And, uh, you know, personal, reliable, rational, you, you come across very credible. But you guys have made some mistakes. So tell us about a mistake that you've made and a lesson maybe you learned from that mistake. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, you know, along this path of figuring out how we can help uh, businesses around the world find software from uh, the people they need, um, it, was, uh, it was a tough go. So people in the early days didn't think that cloud or SaaS would ever be a thing. And in fact, for one of our first customer launches, uh, we spent about a year delivering for that big launch. Um, and they were going to be selling you know, a suite of software. And 72 hours before the launch, we didn't have any of the apps that we um, you know, had, had thought we'd have in the inventory. We had to stay up 72 hours. We got the apps in. And we were so excited that we'd have this launch. And all of a sudden, everyone would come. And, and in fact, we, we kind of, it was like crickets. We pressed the launch button, no one showed up. And the thing we realized is that businesses won't just buy technology from a website. They buy technology from people they trust. So the biggest thing that we realized is how do we bring, build the tools and technologies from the back end to enable you as the channel and resellers to best help your customers through this shift to the digital transformation? Because businesses won't just go online and buy um, they want to buy from you, uh, and, and we really want to help you do that. There's the closer line. Businesses want to buy from you. Ladies and gentlemen, from two guys in a dorm room 10 years later to now a unicorn with a 
billion dollar plus valuation, co-CEO of AppDirect, ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Sachs. Thank you. Thanks, TC.